Hey guys and welcome to another episode tutorial with me Joseph Evans, author of the Secret Sequence books, The Phoenix Prophecy, The Ember Effect, Soulbound, The Secret of Rain, The Last Goodbye and Glitch Girl. If you find my tutorials helpful and you'd like me to continue making them, please take a quick moment to check out my Patreon page and see the different ways that you can support me. If you do decide to support me, you can get a range of rewards as a thank you from me, including early access to these tutorials, voting on what tutorials I make, episode goodie bags, shoutouts for you and your stories, and even personal help from me. You can also get certain rewards by becoming a member of my channel. All you need to do is click the join button underneath this video, or click the first link in the description of the video. Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to create text messaging scenes that make it look like the characters in your story are using something like iMessage or Facebook Messenger. Okay, so I have a simple scene already set up here where Sekri is standing in his bedroom looking at his phone. First of all, I want to make it look like he's actually typing something. So let's have him perform the text neutral loop animation. So at Sekri starts text phone neutral loop and we'll pause for one second and then I wanted to cut to his phone screen so that we can see the messages as they appear. Now you could use the official cell phone background that episode provides but the screen is actually too small for the messages and they begin to go out of the boundaries like this. So I would not recommend it. Instead, you can either create your own screen, or you can use this one that I've created, which perfectly fits around the bubbles. You can find the download link to this background in the description of this video. Okay, so I'm going to cut to this background, which is int phone messenger day. And here's the important bit that will transform the story temporarily into a messaging one. I need to write the word set in all lowercase letters, then a space, and then format again in all lowercase letters, then another space, and then the words phone text as one word, again, all in lowercase. So phone text with no space in between those words. And now I can write all of my messages underneath each character's name. So I'm first of all gonna have Sekri say simply, hey Aya, and let's put a kiss at the end of that as well. And I'll have Aya respond with, Hey sec, with a kiss, and what's up? Let's have Sekri respond with just wondering if you fancy going to the broken motion gig with me tonight. Another kiss. And then we'll have AS saying the broken motion uh, playing tonight. Just make some room down here and I'll have Sekri say, yep. What do you say? And then A can say, um, of course. And then Sekri can say, cool, I'll meet you in half hour. And then I'll have A.S. saying, so excited. We have a few old school text messaging hats there. Okay, I think it's time to preview this and see what it looks like. So we've got Sekri standing there and then he begins to type his message and his message pops up on the screen. So, hey Aya. And then there's Aya's bubble, hey Sec. And as I tap away at the screen, you can see these bubbles actually move up as though it is in some kind of messaging app. Brilliant. So that is looking great so far, but there are a few things that I can improve. Right now, all of these messages are appearing on the left side of the screen, whereas in most messaging apps, the user sees their own messages appear on the right hand side, usually in a different color bubble to the messages from the person that they're messaging. To get Sekri's messages appear different to Aya's, I need to go back to the landing page of my story. 
then click on characters and I'm going to scroll down and on the bottom left of the screen you can see this box which says main character and you can specify who the main character of your story is. If I change this from none to Secri, then save those changes, then go back to my script, preview that again, and you can now see that Secri's bubbles are on the right hand side of the screen and they are now in a blue bubble instead of a grey one. And we still have air here over on the left with the grey bubbles which makes this look way more like a proper messaging app. Now this is working perfectly for the scene that I'm making, but if for any reason you need to manually set which side a character's bubbles appear on, you can do this. Even with Secri selected as my main character, I can write at Secri and then the word left in lowercase letters to manually move Secri's bubbles over to the left hand side. And if I also write at a uh, right, then Aya's bubbles will appear on the right to make it look like it's her phone screen that we're seeing instead of Secri's. Let's just save and preview to check that that works. There we go, Secri's are on the left and Aya's are on the right. I can even have both characters bubbles appear on the right if I want. I just change Secri to right here Save and preview again. And now the entire conversation is on the right. One thing that doesn't seem to be possible is manually changing the color of the bubbles. So all bubbles that appear on the left are always gray and all bubbles that appear on the right are always going to be blue. I want mine to go back to Secri's being on the right and Aya's being on the left. So let's just fix that. There we go, that's better. And here's another really important thing. When this conversation is over, I want to leave this messaging format behind and go back to being able to direct my story as normal. If I don't add in some code after this scene, all of my speech bubbles going forward are going to look like this and my story will be really messed up. So here is the code that I need to add after this scene is done to get it back to normal. It's the word set again, then a space, then format again, and instead of phone text, we need to write the word cinematic. Cinematic. And now I can just go back to my original scene and copy and paste that in. So Secri is once again standing in his bedroom. And I think I'm going to just swap these around so that he begins the scene texting and then he stops. And maybe I'll just have him leave the room as soon as he's done. So at Secri, exits left. Okay, let's see if this successfully cuts back to Secri being in his bedroom. So there he is, texting away. Our messages pop up. We see the full conversation. And then once it's done, we are straight back to Secri in his room, tapping away, finishing his messages, and then he leaves. There we go guys, that is how to get messaging scenes into your stories, super simple and extremely useful. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the helpful tutorials that I've got coming up, and if you'd like to support me and get some exciting rewards like early access to these tutorials and personal help from me, head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash author Joseph Evans, or click the join button underneath this video. If you have any questions about any of this, make sure to comment them down below. And if you know the answer to anyone else's questions in the comments, it would be great if you could give them a quick answer to help them out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Good luck adding messaging scenes into your stories, and I will see you all in my next video.